Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome into the Gramlick and McLean podcast, presented by Ingles, the official supermarket of Gramlick and McLean. <laughs> For a second there, Mac, I definitely forgot what day it was. I yeah. was not sure. <laughs> not Listen, at all. We've got basketball episodes coming out, a sneaky one next week. We haven't even told y'all about this. We haven't even hinted it. I'm hinting it right now. <laughs> you got to figure it out. That's the only hint I'm giving you. Uh, football galore. <laughs> You're calling games here in a second. I'm headed to Raleigh. We're just all over the place, KG. So this is the yeah. this is the peak time of craziness where we record whenever we can, however we can, and we make it happen. But it is Friday. Let's go. Yes. While we record basically while um, the babies are napping or we can just find Can't two confirm. seconds when we're not Can't busy. <laughs> so Max, only clue for next week's special episode is just that it's next week. That's your only clue? I thought I said basketball. It has to do with basketball. Okay, it does have to do with basketball. Figure it, it out. It does have people. to do with basketball. Figure it out. And I'll just say a game that Mac and I will both be attending. Okay, that's oh, all I'm saying. That's it. Woo. That's it. <laughs> Can't wait. Before we get into all these games coming up this weekend, I want to just give a little PSA that relates to Ingles. Mac doesn't know where I'm going with this. Mac and I are working on a special uh, charity project, if you will partnering with Ingalls and Ingalls is so generous. They always have so much going on, but right now we're getting into the holidays, Mac, after Thanksgiving, we're officially into, (laughs) sorry, not after Thanksgiving, after Halloween, we're officially into the holiday season. That's right. And so I would just encourage you, if you are able to start thinking about, you know, whether you give 20 bucks, you know, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. just giving to someone who might need it this holiday season. No doubt. It's always, uh, you know, for a bunch of families, this is a very stressful time. And whether you're in need or not, it's a stressful time, right? But when you have others relying on you, uh, it's just a little bit more. And, and you know, we're going to try to do our best to, to help out the way we can. And as you mentioned, huge shout out to Ingles for helping us with this project. We ho- are hopeful we're going to, you know, be able to help out a bunch of people and, and really focus on, you know, our area, right? The upstate, you know, where we grew up and, and went to school. So going to be excited. Some fun stuff coming there, guys. Uh, but as KG said, kind of Get out there. Help some people if you can, because uh, we all need a little love, all need a little help, um, which is super exciting. Um, not to that to, to barely transition here, KG, I do need to know, because I can't remember because of my football brain. Have you started listening to Christmas music yet? Not yet. Not you yet. know, okay. as, I've, <laughs> as I've gotten older, I've come to realize Thanksgiving <laughs> has its place. Yeah. Now... You know, I mean, Thanksgiving, it's it's lovely. It's not Christmas. It's pre-season. You know, Christmas is it's a pre-season goat. Christmas. It's cool. But, you know, I'm at the point where it doesn't, <laughs> I don't feel like it's necessary yet. Plus, Taylor released some vault tracks, so obviously that's what I'm focusing on at this time, Mac. So <laughs> those will get me through November, and then I'll get to Christmas. Can I just tell you, I I listened to those. Wait, you did? It just doesn't, it just doesn't do anything for me. <laughs> So you listened to the vault tracks from 1989? I did. I did. You and a guest from next week told me to listen to one in particular. And I was just like. You didn't like it. Did you? What about just listening to 1989? Like the OG? I've heard it before. Yeah. I've listened to it. Okay. All right. It's just, you know, I expected like to literally just start ascending in my car and I didn't. (laughs) Um, So that was a little disappointing. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's good music. It's just. Not for me. I Maybe guess. it's just not for it's you. Just not for me. You should listen to Midnight's. Try out Midnight's. Okay, that'll be next. That'll be next. Listen to <laughs> um, Karma okay. or Vigilante. Already, that doesn't sound ish. like me. That doesn't sound like me. When you're working out, when you're working out, okay. try it. Okay, try it. I can do that. Okay, I promise. We need a transition. We know that old man who's going to comment. Sorry, I don't know if you're old, and say stop talking about Taylor Swift. Well, it's fine. We're done. Uh, let's get to a message from Ingles, and then we will get to some football. College basketball is kicking off with the Asheville Championship at the Harris Cherokee Center Asheville on November 10th and 12th, featuring my Clemson Tigers, Maryland, Davidson, and UAB. Tickets are on sale now at AshevilleChampionship.com. Save your spot, cheer on your team at the Asheville Championship, November 10th and 12th. Again, that's AshevilleChampionship.com. Get your tickets today. All right, Mac, let's get to these games. We've got three games in our big game breakdown and then a speed round of four games that we will run through. One of those happening tonight in BC Syracuse. Yes, we'll sprint through them. Let's just start here, Mac. It should have been one of the biggest games of the season. I think it's still big 
for a lot of different reasons to big brands, but number 15, Notre Dame is at Clemson. Notre Dame, as of today on Thursday, is a three-point favorite. Mac already looks worried if you're watching on YouTube. <laughs> there are so many ways we can start here. Number one is, is Will Shipley yep. going to play? I mean, that's number one there. Dabo said he's in protocol, and it's up to the doctors. Then, if you haven't really been following Clemson this week, and you're tuning in to hear about some other games, but you're curious about this game, Dabo went on an epic rant on a call-in show um, on a guy named Tyler and got people fired up. So maybe <laughs> that helps. I don't know. And then Clemson's also had a lot of success against Sam Hartman. Is there any reason to be leaning or picking Clemson um, here, Matt? You also forgot a little other thing, KG. This is the B-Y-O-G game. Come on. It's been like 100 years. Mac played 100 in years it. since these guys have been in the Valley. What kind of scheduling are we doing here? Like, get them back I know, where they right? belong. Um, you know, it is going to be interesting. All those things that you just mentioned, obviously very important. Uh, Will Shipley's availability, by far the best player on Clemson's yeah. team. Um, you know, banged up, and, and that was a really scary hit. So I, I'm probably leaning that he's not going to play. Uh, just based on what I saw there, I have no clue, um, you know, if, if he is or isn't able to go. Um, Evans, the tight end for, for Notre Dame, not able to go. That's their best receiver. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, two of the most prolific offensive players for each team potentially or probably not going. Um, and then just, you know, what's going to come from this game? You know, how much energy is, is the team able to harness? Like, like, as you mentioned, how's, how's the, crowd? the crowd? What Are they receptive? Are they with their coach? You know, based on my Twitter, uh, you know, feedback that I got, I think some people are jacked up and, and with coach. So, That'll be interesting, but it's a nooner. You know, I, lot, I know a lot of Clemson fans wanted that mm -hmm. to be a night game. And, uh, you know, just to harness that energy that comes naturally from that. So we'll see. You know, it's going to be really interesting when, when you look at these guys. Unfortunately, you know, I, Clemson has played to their competition this year. So, KG, I would not be surprised mm -hmm. at all to see them square in this game and, and fighting to get sure. a W. You mentioned the Sam Hartman thing. Hasn't had a ton of turnovers versus Clemson, but Clemson historically has gotten after him. I mean, they've sacked him a bunch. Uh, obviously, that's going to be much more difficult with this vaunted offensive line, good offensive line from Notre Dame. So I'm fascinated, KG, to see how this deal goes here. Well, Sam Hartman is coming off last year where he had a lot of success yeah. against Clemson, threw the ball all over the place in that crazy game at Wake Forest. I am actually attending this game, Eric McLean, with Baby Jay, um, Baby Jay coming. Friends. And Nick's parents. No, Jacob is not going. We all, uh, we designated this, uh, now that we all have kids in our in our group, we designated this as mm. the adults only game because we thought ah. it'd be 8 p.m. We thought we could tailgate all day and have fun. And it's a nooner, <laughs> so that's going to be great. But still should be a fun football game. And the I think what this game comes down to, Mac, I think mm. Clemson will be in it. I mean, they've been in. What's, what's so odd is probably the two best teams they've played, well, Duke is Duke is an outlier. I think Clemson yeah. got punched in the mouth, and, and Duke obviously blew him out, but Clemson also fumbled the ball a billion times. Beyond Duke, um, when you look at the Miami game, you look at the Florida State game. Clemson was in the game, and you could yeah. argue should have won the game. But turnovers and other mistakes come to bite them. So will they be in this game? I totally think so. But can they make fewer mistakes? Can they make enough, not make enough right. mistakes to lose? And when you look at this overall – Notre Dame is eighth nationally in turnover margin. They are plus nine on the season. They take care of the football. That yeah. is not an issue for them. Clemson is tied for 99th in the country <laughs> at minus three. Mac, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, only seven power five teams that have committed more turnovers than the Tigers. Clemson's committed 15. <laughs> there is actually, I want you to guess this. There is an ACC team that has committed wow. more turnovers than Clemson. Hmm. Any idea who? <laughs> They're not having a great year. Syracuse. And it's not Pitt. Wake Forest. Ah, so Wake Forest. Yeah, there we go. Wake Forest. I was just thinking a bunch of yep. fumbles, sack and the other fumbles. Teams, and, uh, yeah, I should have went with Wake. Should've yeah, went. so many. Uh, future ACC member Cal Good. is also welcome. in that group, along with Vandy. <laughs> Yeah, welcome. Vandy, Texas Tech, UCLA, Michigan wow. State, and Nebraska. In other words, all teams that aren't good. <laughs> this is what happens when you turn the ball over, Mac. I hate to simplify this game so much, but I think if Clemson doesn't turn the ball over, yeah. they will be in the game, and yeah. they'll have a chance no, to win I, it. I think that's 
it's how it is. It's cut and dry. It's been the Achilles heel of these guys the entire season. I mean, you look how they're out gaining people. You look how they're moving the ball, you know, helped out on the deficiency, scored in the red zone last week, but still turned the ball over too much, gave too many extra opportunities, and the other team was able to win the game. And so for me, KG, there's no question that that's what it comes down to. Um, and, and how can you manage the game, you know, offensively? I think what's interesting about Notre Dame is what are they going to look like? Because now their best receiver, best pass catcher, is mm -hmm. truly a, a freshman, a true freshman. You know, you don't have your reliable tight end. You're really going to be hurting on, on who to get the ball to. Uh, and, and so can Clemson take that away? Now, if they do, let me remind you quickly, Notre Dame was able to run the ball all over the yard last year for like 250 yards. That, that just really doesn't happen to Clemson. And so when that did, that was pretty shocking. How will they be able to stop that, to be able to take that away? Uh, how much is the crowd going to be involved there? What, what I do want to see from Clemson, though, is that turnovers. And, and you know, really – focusing on that and, and just getting the ball out quick being you know on the same page offensively Kelly there was a play I had to FaceTime you to mm. show you this because it, it, it's just yes. always something you know that there, there's insurmountable things that happen where I, I showed you this blitz package NC State did an unbelievable job of bringing more people than Clemson could cover the left guard you know, is, is in a you know question mark. What am I going to do? I go to, like I'm going outside. Then I come back inside. Will Shipley took his first read and then has to jump out. Guy hits Cade mm -hmm. right in the face. Cade still gets it off. It's a massive 20, 30-yard gain. Oh, well, come back holding on the outside. So it, it's like even Crazy. when bad stuff happens, Clemson overcomes it, and then still something else is right there. So how can they play cleaner? How can they get it going? That offensive line needs to have a good day. Figure it out up front. Communicate, over-communicate, understand where you're going, target the right guy, take the right footsteps, get your hands in the right place, move as one. This is a position that takes everybody on the same page. If one guy isn't, the entire line will look bad. So really challenging those guys this week. Are, are they able to do that? There's the potential that you're only going to have your big 230-pound <clears throat> running back, Moffa back there, run the football. Convert right. on short yardage, convert in the red zone and on goal line, and be able to get it done. So those are the things that that they seem small, uh, but but they've got to be able to do those at a high clip. KG, Mac, you need to get. I think some Clemson fans are asking why you can't go speak <laughs> to the O line room and at least you know get them get them fired up there. But yeah, I love that you showed me that play. Basically, it's the little yeah. things. It's yeah. the tiny details that Clemson is struggling with. The Shipley factor is huge. And when you talk about running backs, we know oh. Estime is just a freak for Notre Dame. And with who's out for Notre Dame, they're going to try to run the ball. Clemson also, just one, let's give one positive note about Clemson. They are second yeah. in the ACC in pass defense. Their pass defense has actually been good. So bottom line is Notre right. Dame is going to have to run it. And can Clemson bow up and stop the run? Or at least contain Estime, not let him get you know a big 70-yard run like he has against other teams, but without Shipley as well, Mac, even though you do have Mafa, that worries me a little bit. I, he, this sounds so bad, but I am taking Clemson's yeah. opponent until proven otherwise. I yeah. think you yeah. kind of have to at this point. I think it helped Clemson if this is a night game, but right. you know, you haven't earned a night game. Like they don't, yeah. they don't want to put yeah. you on, no, it's, it's, on prime time, I guess. I don't think, so I'm taking you know, Notre Dame minus three. Like what you said, you know, you got to show me. You got to be able to do it. You got to prove that you're not going to give the game away. You know, and, and it's unfortunate that that's where they are right now. Um, I'm not doubting your skill. I'm not doubting your talent. I'm just doubting can it all be on the same page at the same time every single play because I haven't seen it. Right. You know, it's one of those things where you, you just got to have it. And you know, Clemson has obviously created this core of wide receivers, pass catchers with Collins, Brown, and Brenning Sewell. Those three have to continue to step up. And, and Stilato's been great, too, I've, what I've seen from him. Um, but, mm -hmm. a, again, it's just it, it, it's getting going. It's not making the little mistakes. It's not holding on the perimeter when you have no business holding. There was no reason to do that. It, it's running a, a, a route. It's third and 11. You're running your route, and you're two yards behind the line of scrimmage. It's like, what are you doing? Like, get positive yardage. Get it going there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so all of that just has to come together has to come on the same page, calling the, the, the right plays, being aggressive, pushing the ball downfield. We'll see if they can do that. They've got a big challenge, got a big brand, and a Notre Dame team that, that obviously is going to be motivated and want to take this from you. 
It's crazy to think that Clemson yeah, could sure. still finish eight. Go do it. So, and that that would no salvage question. this year no somewhat. Win a bowl game. You know, you can't win ten games, That's but right. there's still some things in front of the Tigers. Okay. Let's get to our next game here. We talked about this game a lot on Wednesday. If you missed that episode with APR with Antoine Powell Ryan, go listen to that. Virginia Tech is at number 13, Louisville. What I'm seeing today, Thursday, is Louisville minus nine and a half. That seems like a pretty big number, but <laughs> Jawar Jordan is playing. Where are they? And when he plays, Louisville <laughs> wins. Right. And they're That's playing right. at home. And when yeah. Louisville plays at home, they win. And most of the time, they cover. What's crazy about this game, Mac, is Virginia Tech, with their terrible losses to Rutgers and Purdue. Oh, yeah. They control their own destiny. If they beat yeah. Louisville on Saturday night with three games remaining, three very manageable matchups remaining, they control their own destiny to make it to the ACC championship. <laughs> it is game. absolutely, absolutely well. wild. And this is, this is playoff football. This is what you want. Meaningful, impactful football in the month of November and we've got it right here winner you're going to the championship you control your destiny to go to the championship <laughs> loser you need some help you need a lot of help and and I think that's great that these teams can control that and great that they're playing their each other it's not just a random one-off uh where a team loses to another yeah. conference these are two teams in the driver's seat together uh and, and winner's going to take that step just to there and, and solidifying that um when I look at it from the Louisville side I, I just can't help but think, my gosh, what if? Because when those rankings came out, I think Louisville would have would have probably been number six or, or five right there in the middle. And what an unbelievable opportunity. Now, listen, you still take care of business. Everything's out in front of you. I, I still think there's a chance you need a ton of help. You need a bunch of moving parts. Uh, but I think there's a way you can get into that thing, and, and especially when you look at this. Well, especially yes. because – Yes. Jordan was hurt. We, we have heard the committee that say that committee. year after year, so-and-so wasn't available. We don't really value that game the same as you would if he was there and how different it was with weather mm -hmm. and the injury. So I, I think a lot of people not thinking about that. Uh, I, I, surely, you know, again, you can take care of business and do your thing. Triple J's got to play. They got to be explosive. Uh, I do want to see a little bit more uh, from Jack Plummer. You know, he, he's kind of taken a couple of games off now where he hasn't mm -hmm. been as explosive, certainly hasn't scored a bunch of points and has had turnovers but looking back at that Pittsburgh game. So how can he kind of take regain control there uh, and, and push the ball downfield, score a bunch of points, get this offense going? Jawar Jordan, as you mentioned, KG, you called him the most important player to his team. I think that's pretty evident when he's on the field for these guys. Yeah. They're just a different looking team. The home run ability that he has to score from anywhere is such a threat that you have to pay attention to and, and have to be ready for. So offensively, you know, these guys playing at a super high level uh, on the, the Virginia Tech offensive side, Kyron Drones and company, since he has been the guy, KG, they have exploded offensively, averaging over 200-something yards a game rushing since he's been the starting quarterback. Because of his run threat ability, we've seen more from Tootin and Thomas. Those guys have opened up and been really complimentary yeah. pieces. And then just seeing Lane and you know these other receivers really extend the field and have that vertical threat. This is a completely different team since what we saw them early in the season and these guys starting. Um, and, and so I'm excited to see both these offensive attacks. It's crazy that Virginia Tech is having this kind of improvement without. <laughs> Could you imagine? Ollie Could you imagine Jenkins, if we had him too? Who I mean, we my were gosh, all it'd be so, fun. so excited about? Yeah. That it's kind of shocking because when he yeah. got hurt early in the season, everyone's yeah. like, oh no. I mean, this, whatever hope we had, but just credit to Virginia Tech for completely turning this thing around. I think for Virginia Tech to be in this game and, and really have a chance, yep. they've got to wreak some havoc and probably mm -hmm. force some turnovers, whether it's a strip sack, something like that, with how they get after the quarterback. Yeah. They're Virginia yeah. Tech's fifth nationally in sacks per game at 3.75, which is great. We know APR. He leads the ACC in sacks, tackles for loss, all these things. They're dominant in that regard. I think they got to pick their moments, right? Because Jawar Jordan right. can beat you, yeah. especially if you blitz and they just dink and dunk to Jawar and he's gone. That's what's going to worry me for Virginia Tech. But you still, that's your strength. You've got to use it. You've got to get to oh, yeah. Plummer. And he is turnover prone. Oh, I absolutely. Think that's going to be the guys key have for a Virginia Tech. Handful of guys who do have picks and, and have gotten their hands on the football, but. A lot of sacks, KG. I mean, these guys are playing at a very high level. And it's been fun yeah. to watch that. You know, really for a team to 
get back to the identity that made them such a powerful brand. Uh, you know, with Beamer Ball and, and that Thursday night and getting after the quarterback. Defense. Saxburg uh, coming to Louisville here. Let's, we'll see if that game translates. So looking for APR to, to really ball out, looking for that defensive line, uh, again, for Virginia Tech to try to make this game one-dimensional. When, when you have such a balanced team like Louisville, you, you mm-hmm. just you really aim to take something away. Most of the time, that's the run. Uh, so we'll see. We'll, it'll be interesting to see. Do they load it up? Do they really focus on that and, and try to do it? And then you look at the Louisville defense, and, and okay, you, you mentioned first guy in the league with sacks. Don't forget about the second guy because he plays for Louisville and Ashton Gelati, and, and you know is is that's half right. a sack behind him would be tied for the lead, uh, you know, and, and might be after this game. So it'll be interesting to see which defensive end, which edge player bests. Uh, the other in this game, Ashton's been on a tear. Both these guys are, are you know, rising very quickly and accelerating. Both have a knock for the football, creating fumbles, getting fumbles. Uh, so, uh, so I'm excited to see that and, and what they can do moving forward. And then you look at, at interceptions, uh, Neal, Devin Neal for, for Louisville, I think is tied for first in the country with three picks. He, he's a guy that gets his hands on the football, is going to be able, mm-hmm. you know, to, to do that and to force different things. So, Look out for this Louisville defense too. I mean, this is this game is so fascinating to me, KG, because all the strengths are going against strengths. It, it's it's good on good. It's matchup make fight all yeah, day long. Strength on strength. And I just this is gonna be a really fun game, no question. And we saw we mentioned this on Wednesday. The last yeah. time Virginia Tech faced a really yeah. good running back was Trey <laughs> Benson, and he went off when they played Florida State. I think the other key for Virginia Tech, yes. you've Touchdown. got to finish drives touchdowns. and score in the yeah. red zone. Louisville yeah. is third in the nation in red zone defense. That's yeah, you got to get touchdowns, especially on the road. Um, all that being said, you know what, Mac? I it's not personal. For some reason, I've gone against Louisville for multiple <laughs> weeks, even though we all we both picked him to cover at Pitt. LOL. Um, and I'm just gonna be so mad if I if I don't go against <laughs> Louisville this week and Virginia Tech covers. And I like think that? Virginia Tech. Is going to cover. I think this game will be close. I think Louisville wins, but Virginia Tech covers the okay. nine and a half. So give me the Hokies plus nine and a half. And if if Louisville <laughs> covers here, I'll stop. You're back on the train. We'll see about that. We'll see. They, they I will play stop a taking them couple to not you know, interesting teams to the end here. Uh, I'm going with the Cards. Uh, I, I think they cover different team at home, <laughs> different team with Jawar Jordan. Um, and, and again, when you look at Virginia Tech, no disrespect. I understand. I know who you're playing. But Pitt, Wake, Syracuse all have something in common. They not great. So yeah, this is a, a good, good team. We'll see what happens here. Not good. Um I will give Probably you this opportunity. Do you want to switch? Do you want to come over to the other side right now? She's locked in, baby. Let's go, Hokies. No. Just no. Not Saturday afternoon. <laughs> come on, Hokies. Please. You're feeling good. I like Please, it. Please like at least cover for your girl. Please. That'd be nice. Okay, so we just agree on that one. Max keep it going. Is, uh, three games up on me right now, so I got to make some moves. I got to make some moves. All right, how about number four, Florida State at Pitt? We're still keep every Florida State game's in the big game breakdown because they're pushing for the playoff. And mm. they're actually number three now in the playoff rankings. I wrote down the AP, so that is um, my apologies. We'll fix that for next week. Florida State is at Pitt. Florida State's a 21-point favorite. Mm. Is this still a trap game? I'm going to say no. I think Pittsburgh ha- is and maybe has always been – uh, this season, a little bit of a disaster. And coming off that Notre Dame game where you had Narduzzi saying some stuff and then having to apologize for it, I don't know where your locker room is. Mac, I don't I don't know how you bounce back from getting yeah. beat 58-7 to and go play FSU. And FSU, I think the way right. Pitt covers is if FSU has like crazy turnovers or something, but FSU it's actually crazy. has only committed four turnovers mm-hmm. all year. That's fourth in the country. That's crazy. I, so I, I had to look at the weather I not see quickly. Covering this number, I had sir. to know. Okay, is it going to be rain? No rain. Well, allegedly, okay. what Tell this me, says. I didn't look. No rain. Not that cold. I mean, in the forties, it's not bad. I mean, it's it's obviously cold. Um, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. Um, but certainly, That's it's really not cold. Shoot, I woke up. It was thirty-one degrees this morning <laughs> in South Carolina. It's unbelievable. So you're not dealing with that, at least. Yes, it um, was so, so cold. I, I think that will you know, be a, a fine thing there and. You know, Florida State just have to figure it out and have to keep going and understand what is at stake here. I think they have really, again, I've said this a hundred times, but since that Clemson game, Florida State ascending and playing at a very high level. Quarterback Jordan Travis is square mm-hmm. back in the Heisman race. 
I, I think he has a chance after this weekend, just statistically, to keep going, uh, to creep up into that favorite, into that top three, uh, and, and have a chance because he's playing Miami, because he's playing at Florida, uh, to, to have those Heisman moments and to go against those big brands, big opportunity, yeah. big audience, and say, let's go. Let, let's get it on and pop it. And so for me, I, I think other people continuing to step up. You know, KG, we've seen this kind of run where different guys have been heroes at different times. And I think that's great that they have that opportunity, that they have that ability. I right. thought that Florida State was coming off their best game of the season. How do they continue to stay at that level? Uh, because I, I think that's what's next. Somebody asked me the other day, you know, where does Florida State go from here? You know, how do they do this? How do they do that? I said, they're there. This is the level you need to play at for the rest of the year. Maintain that and, and keep going. So Maintain. I think that's exactly what we see from the Knowles as they go up to Pitt. We are also getting to a point with FSU where, and you see this in the yes. playoff rankings, we always talk about it's better to lose early. We're getting to a point now where they remember November and losing <laughs> now, not that, I'm not going to lose to Pitt as I say that, yeah. you know, yeah. but you just need losing help. now. You just need help. Really and, and here, I, I will stand by this statement until it's proven work. otherwise. Yeah. But yeah. a one loss ACC champ is getting in the playoff. It's never not happened. Now, Listen, if that if they do lose, and whether it's to Pittsburgh or lose in the next couple of weeks or whatever, and other people do not, then it's going to be hard to, to get in there. My my statement's going to be hard to to continue to be accurate. Right. right. Yes. It's 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 never. But so not far, happened. and those guys have gotten it has in, happened. Uh, Clemson being, I think, all of those. Maybe Florida State one year um, back in fourteen. So we'll see. Keep it rolling. Excited to see the the Noles keep going, getting in. FSU right. was undefeated. That's they were undefeated right. because That's they right. were flirting with a loss every single week. And it was Unreal. Unreal. honestly so crazy with how Florida they State. I don't know if I said that, that but I undefeated. think the Knowles cover the 21 and a half. All right. Okay. Yeah. I agree. I agree. We shall see. Okay. Speed round. Let's roll through these, Mac. Miami is at NC State. 8 p.m. ACC Network. That is where you and the boys will be on ACCN. Miami is a four and a half point favorite. That is an interesting number. That is a tough number. If you win by a field goal, you don't cover that kind of thing. I don't have a lot of faith in NC State. I think really when you look at the NC State Clemson game, not trying to take anything away from NC State. NC State fans do not get mad. But if you watch the game, you realize Clemson lost it maybe a little more than NC State wanted. NC State did enough, but Clemson just killed themselves as per usual. So I'm going to lean Miami here, Mac. And I like Miami's lines of scrimmage, Miami running the ball, and that defense and that secondary going up against MJ Morris. And then if they bring in Brennan for like these weird running packages, whatever that is, I, we'll I like that Miami um, defense to travel. I, I think oh, I think the Wolfpack took, took the game away from Clemson. Oh? I mean, obviously the pick six – the, the turnovers, the big plays, Kevin or Casey Concepcion. I mean, yeah, we all knew where they were going. You couldn't stop it. Um, now, I, it's hard to sit here and say that Miami's defense is better than Clemson's um, because statistically, I just – there's so many good things, and, and Clemson has put themselves in these tough spots. I, I'm going with the Wolf back here. I think they cover. Um, I think the ruckus environment, I think the TVD okay, turnovers good. of late – um, Peyton Wilson, I, I don't know. True. Yeah. Yeah. Peyton Wilson, I don't yeah, know if, if he's healthy or what. I think he was like week. trying on braces and trying to go in that game. I'm hoping and assuming he's good. Um, yeah. I, I'm rocking with the pack. I good think point. they get this done. I think their defense is going to make some real problems okay. for my All right. And it's just, they're, they're attacking. I mean, I showed you that blitz. It's hard to target. Um, we'll see. We'll see, but I'm, I think I'm going with the Wolfpack here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And State has given some good teams some issues when they're at home. Louisville, for example. And But I, I think Miami is similar right. to what exactly. you said about Clemson. They're going <laughs> to play brutal. up or down to the team yeah. or the moment. They played down to Virginia. They played down to Georgia Tech. They played up to A&M, up to Clemson. Now we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, UNC may be right. the exception, even though they played pretty well. Just UNC looked so good. And now UNC, of course, who knows what's <laughs> happening. Okay. I, I'm I'm excited that we disagree Can't there, wait. Mac. Can't you wait. will be there in person know, to uh, see if I'm wrong, I guess. See if you're right. Woo! 
happening tonight. I know you will. Happening tonight, Boston College at Syracuse. As of Thursday, Syracuse is a two and a half point favorite, <laughs> seven thirty p.m. Mac is so excited. I think he just threw something. This is on ESPN two tonight. BC has been rolling, and Syracuse has been struggling. Syracuse has had their their October of like death. A year they've and been on the road now they're for back a home. long time. They've also been on the road a ton, Mac. Yeah. But they are coming off a beatdown at Virginia Tech. I know they've had a little longer because they played that game on Thursday, but still this is a Friday, so it's not you know completely to a Saturday. I got to go BC here. BC yeah. is averaging 215 rushing yards per game. Their O-line has been excellent, led by Christian Mahogany, your boy. Mm-hmm. Castellanos, I know he went out last game, but he came yep. back in. So I don't know if you're hearing anything different, Mac, but I think he should I be good. I this is I'm, – this I'm feels Eagles. like Fly, Eagles, the – uh, the Pitt Wake Forest game, where I thought there was no question, no doubt, no nothing that Pitt would win that game. And somehow Wake oh, Forest was, no. was favored. This line has moved a little bit. It was Syracuse two right. and a half. True. Now it's Syracuse three. Um I don't I just I don't get it. I, I don't know oh. why. I don't know why oh. you would pick them uh or, or why Vegas has money on them. They know something. I'm hoping that it's not enough. Uh, because I'm going they with BC as do. well. Tommy Castellanos has been incredible. The wide receivers around oh, him okay. have been great. The offensive line, obviously, moving and Tuami. grooving. And Cuse, I mean, they, it was just hard. I mean, at the end of the game, they just looked uninterested. And there was an incident on the sideline where guys are, like, laughing and joking, and they're getting just absolutely killed by Virginia Tech. Yeah. Uh, Eric Dungy's calling them out, you know, calling out his team. Um, so maybe they play inspired because of that. Yep. Uh, and Boston College that. defense isn't, like, elite. Um, I, I think I'm going with the best player on the field, Tommy Castellanos and BC. I, I think they win. I think they get the W. Love Christian. Love him. But I thought you would say that Christian Hogan's best player right, on the field. Let's be real. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but at his position. Yeah. That's true. Okay, let's talk about these last two here. Georgia Tech no, at that's Virginia. It. That's it. That's Virginia, it. a two-point favorite. Mac, unless you've seen something else. I think I got my numbers earlier than yours. <laughs> 2 p.m. on the CW. Pylon cams, Where ref they have the cams, ref cam. maybe a I sky cam. I the ref cam on CW. Got blasted. Be honest. Yeah, it was. The ref cam was cool. And when the ref <laughs> got hit, that was kind of exciting. It was cool. Um, battle of this, this game here, Mac, is the battle of the two teams with the worst rush defenses in the ACC. Oh, yeah. And you've got Georgia Tech on the flip side that is running the ball well, averaging nearly 200 yards per game. Virginia, they finally yeah. got a win. William & Mary beat UNC, had every chance in the world to beat Miami. <laughs> Virginia's back at home. I think they're feeling pretty good about themselves. Georgia Tech is also feeling good about Are themselves. I, I think I'm just going to lean home team here, Mac. And Virginia... Yeah, Virginia has a knack for covering, especially lately. And I know they're favored, so that means I'm picking UVA to win. Yeah. But this just seems like the most ACC thing imaginable. That Georgia Tech goes and, you know, has oh, a crazy win over North Carolina it's and brutal. then loses um, to Virginia, who beat North Carolina. It's perfect. Georgia Tech has not won two games in a row in a long time. Um, they also they also do not win the – Yeah, uh, and that's what they do. Win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. Now I'm just messing up my stat here. Unbelievable. They don't win the odd. They only win evens. So because of they that, I'm going Virginia. With a That's loss. the only thing I'm going to tell you. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Both teams run the heck out of the ball. We're Neither team can Virginia. stop a bloody Woo. nose. Let's just rush for 500 each. I'll set all kinds of records and you know have like a two <laughs> two hour game. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm going Virginia. Calling that game would probably like that. Yeah. Dang, we're agreeing there. All right. And this this is big for no Georgia question. Tech when no it question. comes to bowl eligibility. I mean, they Virginia's need to win this game. It. They're not they out of it. They definitely do. So that's huge. Maybe they are. And Virginia will know after they – Five games. Yeah, they're they still, they're still a possibility. Unbelievable. I thought because they lost Never mind. to Miami, I want, I want Georgia Tech to win. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. pick I want to pick Virginia, right. but I want Georgia Tech to win. I need them to get to the bowl game. I need them to get to a we bowl. Need, I mean, <laughs> I know. It would be better – for Georgia Tech, yeah. We'll see. Better for the ACC, I guess, overall. Last one, Mac. The <laughs> Campbell Camels. I mean, just such a good mascot. At North Carolina, noon on ACC just Network. Just win by 90. Just win. Oh. 
you and see. You make me sad. You make me sad. It's just typical. Because there's just, you had so much ahead of you. You know what yeah. I mean? They're like, to me, they're like a teenager that's yeah. making bad choices. And yeah. I just don't know yeah. what to say. You have such a bright future. Uh, DB's just but you're out here looking making not bad interested, choices, kid. Uh, not one to be physical, not one to tackle. <laughs> Please do not keep this game close. Campbell, they got a quarterback. That dude can spin it. Williams, just, no. just, it's, just hear me now. Right. He can spin it. Uh, but you need to flex your muscles. Drake May needs to go for 500 uh, all-purpose yards. I'd love to see that. And my gosh, the defense, just have a day, please. That's what we need to see, KG. It's just who they are. Mm. It's who they are. It's what they do. What happened? Hard to get what away from happened? what you are. It is a bummer. <laughs> anyway. Such a bummer. Such a bummer, UNC. All right, we'll see what they do. So we disagree on... All Miami right, so and C State. At best, KG, and you make Virginia up two Tech games. At Those best. are going to be the big ones. Those okay. are going to be the game right. changers here. This is this is good. This is strategic. Yeah, yeah you're right best. there. You're, you're nipping on my heels. Um, that was it. I'm Fun coming week. for you. Another big week I'm next week. We you. actually have another four episode mm-hmm. week, guys. Next week, I cannot wait. Uh, basketball season is here. We're not giving you any other clues other than KG and I will be there, and it's a basketball thing. Figure it out. Give some guesses. We need some guesses in the comments and on social media. Uh, but we're super jacked up. It's going to be a fun weekend, impactful weekend, elimination weekend for some teams in the ACC championship run. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Big shout out to our friends over at Ingles. Uh, we need you to get on this YouTube train. You got to come check this out. See the sad faces, see the happy faces, see me dropping stuff, baby monitors, whatever you want. We've got it uh, a galore here. Uh, so come join the party. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave some comments, as I mentioned. And, of course, the OGs over on Apple Podcasts as well. Rate, review, subscribe. We would greatly appreciate that. And I got invited, or reminded, not invited, reminded today, KG, people listen on Spotify. So shout out to all the Spotify listeners uh, who are tuning in with us. We don't give them nearly enough love over there, uh, but we appreciate you nonetheless. Uh, But anyway, until next time, we'll see y'all.